a follow-up for Mr. Farnham? So, yes, I agree we need to do something about the way we campaign. And looking out over the audience, this, I bet there's not anybody here that I haven't walked to your house if you live in this 43rd district. And I think that's a very effective way to campaign. It's the best way to campaign, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. And I'll pledge to keep doing that. When I'm elected, I will keep walking just like I did in January and February. So I appreciate all of the support of all of you coming to your door and talking to me at your door. It really means a lot. I represent you. Ms. Monson? No rebuttal. No rebuttal. No rebuttal. We'll move on now to social policies and housing. And this question will go to Ms. Munson first. To have a safe and affordable home is absolutely the bedrock of stability for any of us. Illinois has benefited from the Federal Homeless Prevention and Rapid Rehousing Program stimulus funds, but these funds will soon be exhausted. At the same time, state funding has was reduced this last year 78% to 2.4 million from 11 million the previous year. With the poor economy affecting more and more families, we need to restore the funding for this program in Illinois. Would you support restoring this funding to intervene in the rehousing and stabilizing of housing for our families? Before I could commit my support to what items uh, should be should be um, budgeted for or the amounts that should be in the budget, we really have to understand what that budget is. We have so many competing needs in this state. Education is a priority. Our social services is a priority. There are a number of different priorities, and I think you all have a right to, to contribute to that prioritization. Um, what we need to do, again, is to dismantle our budget. We have these, these layers of uh, priorities that have been from past governors, from Governor Edgar and, and Ryan and, and Thompson and Blagojevich, and we know that there is a lot of fraud and waste um, that, that has built upon the years, and, and we need to dismantle that and have a clear set of priorities an understandable set of priorities to direct the legislature so that we're meeting everyone's needs. Mr. Farnham. There's very rarely a program where somebody walks through the door and tells me about the program that doesn't sound like a worthy program. Many, many programs out there, and we hear it all the time. But I would agree with Ruth on that one. We must dismantle the budget and start from a, a ground up and look at every line of the budget to find out where money is being spent. Is it being spent effectively? Can there be some consolidation? We must have a conversation in our own communities about the social agencies and all of the programs that we have. So that we need to prioritize and we need to do that together here in our own communities. Follow us for either candidate. No. We will move on to the next question. And this will go to Mr. Farnham. Natural resources and the environment. Again, this question is in two parts. In order to keep Illinois strong as a livestock state, Concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs, are being promoted for Illinois. These large-scale farms are seen as either bringing economic success to the local residents or destroying their quality of life. What is your position on the role of large-scale livestock farms in Illinois? Should the locating of these farms be exclusively under the control of the state, or should the control be on a regional and or county level? Mr. Farnham. My quick answer on that is that I generally tend to believe that local control is always better than state or federal control. I believe the state has a role in that, but I believe that in the counties and in the, the communities that they must have the largest voice. It's going to affect those communities. They need to, they need to have a say in that. I can't say that I understand totally the model. I'm 
not a farmer. I don't live down in the rural areas. I'd want to see a lot more about that and understand exactly what the impact is on those communities before I could really say whether I'm for or against that. You know, I always go back to what happened to the family farm, you know. My grandfather had a dairy farm and he had probably 30, 35, 40 head of cattle, but those days are gone. You know, now we seem to be in mass everything. But maybe there is a place to move back to smaller. Maybe smaller is not always bad. Maybe it's a good thing. Ms. Monson? I believe we need to have strict EPA regulation restriction on these types of operations, but ultimately um, they need to work in conjunction with our local and regional, regional um, governments to make sure that um, it's fitting within in their um, zoning ordinances or within their long-term plans for their community and it won't have a, a negative effect on, on their local communities and they are the, the agencies best able to make that determination. Mr. Farnham? We both local. agree local is always better. Sponsor? Okay. We will move on to the next question. And we will start this with Ms. Munson, and this question is regarding immigration. What are your views on deputizing local and state police to enforce federal immigration laws? Local law enforcement agencies already have the ability through a federal program to deputize their, their um, law enforcement uh, sworn officers. And I believe that local communities are the, the best able to determine whether this program works for them and whether or not it's going to have a negative effect on public safety or a positive effect on public safety. And so I would leave it into um, their capable um, and learned um, decision-making processes. Mr. Farnham? I believe that uh, we have to have a, uh, a very in-depth conversation with our local police departments and find out whether or not, under the current budgets that they have, would this strain them to the breaking point? Would they have to take resources off of the street for specialized? We've already seen in Elgin, and I work with the police officers here quite a bit, that they've had to take officers off of some gang units, off of some neighborhood free, uh, gang free housing uh, units and put them back out on the street to patrol. So, I mean, it is a concern and I want public safety more than anything else. So I think we would have to uh, look at that and, and uh, get some input from the uh, local police departments. Any follow up, Ms. Munson? Follow up, Mr. Farnham? And we will move on to our last question for this segment. 